Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today let's discuss about model question paper of introduction to electrical engineering, question number 10. That is last question of model question paper. Okay, so let's see the question paper. So they asked question number 10 A, define unit used for consumption of electrical energy and explain the two power tariff with its advantages and disadvantages. So you need to write the definition of unit. So that's nothing but one kilowatt hour is the electrical energy consumed by an electrical appliances of power one kilowatt when it is used for one hour. So in general, the unit is nothing but so if you're having any of the appliance, for example, if you're having a fan, okay. So like how many fans you are using in your home into how much time you are consuming for that fan into the power rating of fan. It is nothing but the power rating of appliances into the number of appliances which is used into time taken or else a time consumed for that appliances is nothing but unit, one unit. Okay. So that you can define one kilowatt hour is the electrical energy consumed by an electrical appliances of power one kilowatt when it is used for one hour. The number of electrical appliances into power rating of that appliance into time consumed for that appliance is nothing but unit. Okay. So two part tariff. You need to define two part tariff. So it is nothing but the rate, rate or price. The price of electrical is charged on the basis of maximum demand of the consumer and the units which are consumed is called two per tariff. The price for the price which is charged on the basis of maximum demand of the consumer and units consumed is called two per tariff. So that total charge that is made from consumer is split into two components. One is a fixed charge. That is nothing but a minimum charge, what you can say. So, for example, if you're not using electricity also earlier, you used to pay a minimum amount. That is nothing but minimum do you have to pay, 90 to 100 rupees. That is fixed charge, whether you can utilize the electricity or not. You need to pay fixed charge. One more is running charge. So, running charge means you're using the electricity. So, it depends on the number of units consumed by the consumer. So, fixed charge and running charge. So, they can write total charge. So power rating into energy consumed. That is nothing but P into kilowatt is nothing but charge per kilowatt of maximum demand. Okay, in terms of kilowatts, similarly charge per kilowatt hour of energy consumed. Power rating plus energy consumed with respect to time. So here this tariff which is applicable for industrial consumer who has appreciable maximum demand they can use this this tariff this tariff will be applicable and advantages coming back to the advantages you can easily understand by consumers and it covers fixed and running costs both so fixed charge plus whatever the electricity electricity that you used that also it will be covers and disadvantage the first main disadvantage is that customer has to pay the fixed charge irrespective of electricity consumption if we are not using electricity also, we need to pay minimum amount of charge. So that is one of the biggest disadvantages for this two-part array. And there will be error in setting of maximum demand in some cases. Okay. Let us move on to the second one. <laughs> what is electric shock? And give the list of preventive measures against the shock. So electric shock, you cannot see the shock, but you can experience the shock. You can see that image, you can easily understand what happens if you experience the shock. So that the electric shock occurs when our body becomes a conductor. That is when the human body becomes a conductor for completing the path for current to flow. That is called electric shock. So if we are responsible to complete the circuit, then we will experience shock. And Basic electrical safety is that if path is not complete, current will not flow, shock will not occur. So like water, electricity will take the path of least resistance. If there is a less resistance, maximum amount of current that will flow. So that current will most likely, most likely flows 
through a circuit instead of a human body unless the body presents a path of low resistance so safety precautions so care must be taken so you have to check with the ground points so you have to check with the ground points that are properly provided to all the sockets to which electrical appliances are connected or not so that care must be taken to see that ground points which are properly provided to all the sockets to which electrical appliances are connected or not and also you need to check proper earthing has to be provided and periodically the earthing resistance has to be checked to see that it does not exceed 3 to 5 ohms to maintain earth resistance what happen again we are pouring the water into the earthing either it is for a plate earthing or else to the pipe earthing and you need to install ground fault circuit interrupts in wall outlets that will be located in bathroom kitchen basements garages and also outdoor boxes okay and you need to cover all the electrical sockets with the plastic safety caps then you can, then you can easily avoid electric shock and also replace the very important point is to replace all wall cords and wiring and do not touch electrical appliances and switches with wet hands because in case of wet hands the resistivity there will be a least resistance so that uh, suddenly you can experience electric shock okay and the next one is list out the power rating of household appliances including air conditioner ac pc laptop printer it is find the total power consumed so etc they mention so that you need to write it for all these three all these uh, equipment you need to write so very simple they ask you to calculate units consumed per day of all the equipments and units consumed per month then you can easily get electricity bill you can easily calculate electricity bill so you can consider now uh, in every home if you are taking a normal home but there will be a fan you are using and uh, tube lights led tv refrigerator iron boxes you are using geyser some of the home water nowadays solar power that is uh, solar water heater and water pump you are using obviously and ac is in some of the home and pc some of the home and laptop or printer you will be using so to calculate this you need you need to know the power rating of each electrical appliances for example fan is having 80 watt of power rating and tube light is having 40 watt of power rating led is having 10 watt of power power rating similarly tv 100 refrigerator 140 and iron box 750 geyser 2000 water pump 750 ac 2000 pc 100 laptop 30 See, they mentioned AC, PC, laptop, printer. So that, apart along with this, you need to calculate these four also: AC, PC, laptop, printer. Okay. So fan is nothing but you can see. Uh, so most probably you just uh, concentrate on AC, PC, laptop, printer in the examination. Just see. I will explain in general. Like how you are calculating the total units consumed per month. Suppose if you are having a fan. So to find the unit, there is a formula right here. You, you can see a kilowatt hour. The watt of that is a power rating of appliances into total number of hour that will be used and number of appliances divided by thousand. You are writing in terms of kilowatt hour. So that. So for fan, how we write kilowatt hour of fan, which is given by. So you are using eighty watt of fan. That is eighty into number of appliances three into. Total number of hour consumed that is twelve divided by one thousand. You can get the total number of units consumed in a fan. That is nothing but eighty into three, eighty into three into twelve divided by one thousand. You can get two point eight eight units that will be consumed per day. So everything you are calculating for per day. I am writing here per day. Later you can calculate for per month. So two point eight eight units that will be consumed. 2.88 units. Okay. Similarly, for tube light, 40 watt. It is number of hours eight. It is number of appliances three. So that 40 into three into eight divided by 1000, you can get 0.96 units. 0.96 units per day. Similarly, LED. If you are using 10 watt LED. Four LED we are using it each having ten watt. If we are using it for eight hours, then ten into 
4 into 8 divided by 1000. See now just unit consume 0 0.32 so that they they will use you to they will tell you to use LEDs in home. Similarly, TV can see 100 into 1 into 8 hours I'm taking in general. If you are using TV for more than 8 hours, you can consider more than 8 hours also. So I can get 0 0.8 units consumed. 0 0.8 units. Refrigerator, 0 so you may have thinking like if you are, you are running refrigerator for 24 hours, but that compressor that works only at, for 8 hours. So that 140 watt of refrigerator, one you are using, 8 hours it is running, divided by 1000, you can get 1.12 unit. 1.12 unit. Similarly, iron box, 750 watts of iron box, one you are using for 1 hour. So that you can get 0. 75 units consumed per iron box. Similarly, for geyser, if you are having geyser, 2000 into 1 into 1 divided by 1000, you can get 2 units that will be consumed by geyser. 2 units. Similarly, water pump, 750 watts of motor if you are using. So that, that is nothing but again, you will be needing 0 0.75 units. 0 0.75 units. Similarly, AC, if you are using AC, you can use it for maximum of two hours so that, sorry, maximum of one hour so that you can write by 1002 units that will be consumed by AC. For AC, that will be two units. Similarly, if you are using PC, 100 into one into, I'm just writing it as for two hours. You can also use it for 8 hours, if whatever the number for if we are using, that can write divided by 1000. So I am using 0 0.2 units that will be consumed by PC. 0 0.2 units. Similarly, laptop or printer, separately, if you want to write separately, you write it separately because they mentioned it separately in a question. So I am considering any one, so that, so that I am writing number of hours too. So 30 into 1 into 2 divided by 1000, you can get 0 0.06 units. Laptop means laptop charger. So to charge laptop, we'll be using consuming maximum of two hours. So that I'm writing here two hours for laptop. Printer means max of one hour if you want to get it. These units for uh, these units consumed per day. So per day total units consumed, you need to add all these units that's nothing but 2.88 plus and 0 0.96 plus 0 0.32 plus 0 0.8 plus 1.12 plus 0 0.75 plus 2 plus 0 0.75 plus 2 plus mm, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.06 you can get 11.84 units consumed per day. 11.84 units per day. But you need to calculate per month. For, per, for one month, for one month, you need to multiply by 30 or 31 depending on the month. So 30 into 11.84 units, you can get into 30. 355.2 units. 355.2 units. So normally in home for one unit, it will be charged around 3 to 3.5 rupees. If you are considering minimum of 3 rupees also, 355.2 into 3, you can get nearly 1000 electricity bill that will come. So these all have printed. But they mentioned what? PC, laptop, printer, and AC. So you need to write it for AC. For AC, Particularly for this uh, question, for AC unit rate, that is 2000 into 1 into 1, that is 2 units for AC and 0 0.2 units for PC. For laptop and printer, if you are considering 1 1 hour, so 30 divided by 1000, you can get 0 0.3 each. So 0 0.3 plus or 0 0.03 and 0 0.03 for printer. So total units you can write per day. So 2 plus, so I am just explaining you based on the question like what it does you write. 
So two plus zero point two plus zero point zero three plus zero point zero three. So total units consumed two point two six per day into thirty multiplied per month sixty seven point eight. Like that we have to. Do. So for fan you can see you can calculate energy consumed for fan two point eight per similarly for tube light and LED lamp and TV. Then you need to calculate for geyser iron box. So like that you need to calculate. Then you need to find total unit consumed per day. Later you need to write it for per month by multiplying it with a thirty. If it is a Jan thirty first, if it is a February twenty eighth, like that the number of days you are considering. Then you can easily get electricity bill. That is a predictable electricity bill. So just go, you just take it as assignment. You just try to calculate electricity bill of your home. So just observe your home, what and all the electrical appliances you are using, and just try to get the power rating of that appliance. Then try to uh, observe how much time you are consuming for each electrical appliances per day. Like that, you calculate it for thirty days. Then you can easily get your electricity bill, like how much units you are consuming. And what will be the electricity amount? That is a bill amount you can easily get. Okay, you can easily predict even. Okay, so if you are understanding the concept, do like and uh, subscribe to this channel. And if you are having any doubts regarding this, uh, don't forget to mention in the comment box. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a nice day.